For years I had no idea what layer modes were. I knew that if I had a layer like this cloud layer here, there was a little box here called normal and it had all these various confusing things grouped. I don't know why, but if you selected one of them, it would do things to the underlying picture. And I had no idea what it was actually doing, why it was doing it, how I'm supposed to use them. And so I'd select something and I'd say, well, what does it do and what have you? And it wasn't a very satisfactory way of doing it. If you want to get ahead with Photoshop, you need to know what layer modes are, what they do, why they're doing it, and why they're grouped in a particular way. All right, let's go through it. It's actually not that difficult. Now I've given a couple of extra layers here to help me out. I've got one here called blobs. That just gives a gradient that is completely black to completely white with a black dot, a mid gray dot and a white dot. I've also got this layer here, which will help just for certain things. Right, let's come to our blobs layer. At the moment, it's in normal mode. Normal mode, it just sits on top. Any transparent bits show the underlying layer. That's it. I've got different groups here and let's go through them. Right, the first group here, darker, multiply, color burn, all that lot. They make the underlying layer darker in different ways. The next group here, make the underlying layer lighter in different ways. The next group down, it does both. The dark's gonna get darker, the light's gonna get lighter. So these are the contrasty layer modes. Next group down, they're known as the comparative group. They compare pixels which are underneath. You tend to use these more for technical operations than anything else. And the final group here, they're known as the composite layer modes, and you can use them in different ways as well. That's the grouping. Once you know that, it makes things a lot easier. For example, come up here, come up to darken. Okay, what's happened? Well, you can see that black blob has stayed black. The white blob has gone completely invisible. The gray blob, well, it's kind of making things a little bit kind of gray underneath and a little bit darker as well, but it's not particularly nice mode. Compare that with multiply. That's working nicely. Look, black, completely black, white, completely invisible, but the grays in between, they're darkening the underlying layer in a way that I can use. Multiply is one of your main layer modes. All right, move on, color burn. Do you remember the burn tool that we were using previous video? This kind of works in a similar way, but using the layer rather than the paintbrush. Linear burn, okay, it's not that usable. It's getting a rather kind of strong effect. As for darker color, well, this doesn't show it very well. Let's come to, let's turn this back to normal and let's make it invisible. Come to our clouds layer, make that visible. Let's come to darker color with this. You can see here that anything that's darker than mid gray stays. Anything that's lighter than mid gray goes. Okay, let's get our blobs layer back. Right, so on to the lighten modes. Lighten kind of does the opposite of what darken does, obviously, but again, you're getting this kind of grayed out effect, which aren't too nice. Let's compare that with screen. Screen is more usable, I think. This is another one you'll end up using a lot. Color dodge. We used the color dodge tool in the previous video. This works on a layup rather than a brush mode. Linear dodge, a little bit more intense and lighter color. Well, lighter color does the opposite. Let's come back to our clouds layer, make that invisible. Instead of dark color, let's make it a light color. And now you can see anything above mid gray stays, anything below mid gray disappears. Okay, let's come to the contrasting modes. Overlay. Okay, you can see the black's getting a little bit darker, the light's getting a bit lighter. Overlay is quite a useful mode. It makes things darker and lighter, but in a kind of realistic way. You end up using overlay quite a lot if you want to get a more contrasty layer. You can see it's, it's making things darker and lighter, but in a pleasing kind of naturalistic way that you can use. Compare that with something like soft light. Okay, soft light does something similar. I use soft light quite a bit. It does a similar thing, but it's less in your face, less harsh. Compare that with hard light. <laughs> it's quite a harsh effect. Vivid light. Now, vivid light seems that it's doing color dodge and color burn at the same time. Linear light. Mm, not much you can do with that. Pin light. Again, a very kind of gray image there. And hard mix. 
Okay, if you can find a use for that, great. More for special effects than a photo retouching, I put it to you. So, of the contrasty modes, or the overlay modes, I would go for overlay or soft light. Okay, that's all very nice, and now you've got an understanding, certainly, of the first three modes, which is where you tend to spend most of your time. Okay, let's find a practical example for this. Let's come over to... We've just seen these before. We use those to correct colors. Look, it's all looking very gray. All right, so let's duplicate the layer. I'm going to call this multiply. And I'm going to change its mode to multiply. Okay, what happened there? Well, all the dark colors suddenly got darker. If you remember multiply, it'll ignore the white values, but the, more, the darker the value, the more it'll make the underlying layer darker which is what it's done here. All right, let's duplicate that again. And we'll call this screen. Well, it's looking dark now, but if I change that to screen, it's now taken the lighter areas and it's made them lighter. They're kind of canceling each other out at the moment. But here's one thing about layer modes, and it is a very important thing. See the opacity button here? Here's a trick for you. Slide it all the way down to naught. Okay, it's completely invisible. Then gradually bring up the intensity. That way you control how much the layer on top is affecting the layer underneath. This is very important if you want to get subtle gradations of color, if you want to get subtle effects. Vitally important. Let's come up to our next mode. Come to our next one. The screen, well, that's kind of really kind of getting in my face a little bit here. I want to take this down to a certain extent. The lighter areas are where I want them to be, but still the darker areas, I'm still not happy with that. Okay, here's the next thing you can do with them. I'm going to come down and I'm going to add a layer mask. I've seen these before. But at the moment it's all white, it's not affecting anything. I'm going to make sure that my colors are... I'm going to make sure my foreground color is black. I'm going to come to Image. I'm going to come to Edit, Fill, and I'm going to fill it with my foreground color, which is black. So now the entire layer is invisible. But now, if I get a paintbrush, Control plus Alt, right mouse button to make it larger or smaller. And I'm going to start... I'm going to choose white. And I'm going to start painting. And now I'm painting that layer mode back in to where I want it. And we've done layer masks before. Okay, if I've gone over, which I have there, just switch to black and I can rub out the bits I went over enthusiastically, I can bring them back down again. Also, why stop there? Instead of black or white, I'll choose a mid to dark grey. I'll make it slightly larger. I'll come down to the shoe area and I'm bringing out some of the highlights of the shoes, but less so than if I was to use white at this particular time. Also, I think those the top of the shoes there are looking too light. I'm going to go over the, back over those in slightly dark grey. And now I'm starting to paint details exactly where I want them. And don't forget, I can always come back to my layer. I can adjust the opacity to where I want it. I'm getting a huge amount of control here. One thing I would say about doing this, though, if you're going to put a layer mask on, in this case I put it on the screen mode, try and stick to just one layer. If I had a layer mask in the multiply layer as well, it's very easy to get very confused very quickly. You have to be very sure that you know what you're doing on that particular layer mask and what you're doing on the layer mask on top. So general rule of thumb, it's great to do this. Try and have just one layer mask. Make your life easier. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, and 
memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance-along-with-me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.